busy crowd when you drive that car around the block in the old neighborhood, huh? Yeah, living the dream. Mad pandemonium. But folks from back around the way are real proud of me. Yeah, I hear it. Local kid makes good. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I took my tech stock public and I rang the New York Stock Exchange bell and my mom, mom's friends called her up and said, Maggie, is that your news this morning ringing the bell? And my mom said, yes, sir, Bob, it was him. That was a great moment for you. Like a pearl necklace, a great moment. It's all strung together with the finest silk thread memories. Made those pearls and the thread that this meeting by any chance have to do with Vic Van Leer? I grew up in the burbs, freak. I wasn't poor, upper middle class, comfortable. One of the largest insurance firms in the country. Smart with his money. My mom didn't have to work. I went to boarding school. And then my dad died of a heart attack when I was a freshman. Those interests. My dad didn't want me to be an accountant. <laughs> my best friend was a guy named Isidore. <laughs> yeah, we called him Izzy. He was one of the smartest human beings I have ever met in my life. I mean, Izzy was taking second-year college calculus courses as a high school sophomore. Right? You see, Izzy had the world at his fingertips. But he was always looking for trouble, and trouble found him. He ran with the wrong crowd. And when we got to MIT, every weekend, he would fly to Vegas. Look, you see, Izzy had a system that had the big casinos on the strip. Oh, come back to MIT with suitcases filled with $200,000 in cold cash. What? Yeah. So your man Izzy was getting hit off like that? Like a fat... Because he's dope. <laughs> Not dope. Dead. He's never found hide nor hair of Isidore. And I said I wouldn't do it. Because I knew he was on a dark and twisted... So this meeting is about Vic. Correct him in. Very well, sir. Vic isn't Izzy. How's that, Freak? Well, for one thing, you and your dead friend Izzy didn't grow up poor. Me and Vic grew up in a neighborhood where we had to look over our shoulder every two seconds. And we grew up in a two-parent household. But even that wasn't enough for it. Feel like you have nothing to lose. Vic is like a brother to me, sir. But you shouldn't be brother Vix keeper freak media yes yeah, all good i'm an fof friend of freak it's all misunderstanding i don't think a brother would do that to someone they really cared about but a guy who looked at you like a meal ticket would no so you don't understand Vic. understand no I start flirting back. They spit real beef in the next thing he know. He got a two piece and a biscuit on his left eye. <laughs> Go with him. And damn sure wasn't me. Hey, got the cornballs mad. Cause I'm an FOF friend. You need to train that hottie just when in the house though. Yo. <laughs> What's there to understand? Are you freaking blind? You know, I just thousand dollars. Exactly. And if you keep riding shotgun with Vic and in a hurry. Vic is my friend and I grew up with him. How many times I gotta tell you, sir? Freak, this is not a request. I am not asking you to do this. I am telling you to do this. And the first order of business is that Mr. Vic Van Leer is banned from trying. And if I catch this guy, Vic, in or anywhere near the facilities, Mr. Vic Van Leer will be arrested for trespassing. Are you serious, sir? Brother. No. Me and Vic were kids. Playing summer tournaments at the Dome. We always imagined making for the pro. And after the crowds left, just the street light was on the court. 11.30, 12 midnight, even one in the morning sometimes. Actually, running on the court, giving dab, high-fiving the teammates. Vic, he would act as an announcer. You know, he would introduce me, announce my name on the loudspeaker, and the, the 
jumbotron with a flash my image like little guy dressed in long shorts and a jumbotron. Fresh off his three-game, 62-point scoring streak. The youngest player to ever do so in NBA history. Frequency vibration. Me and Vic were sitting in those empty bleachers at the dome and dream like, no. Vic was part of that. Please. Listen to me. I mean, I know this guy's your dude from way back. Look, me and Vic go way back like the front seats of the 67 Cadillac. <laughs> Beach and Cali. This guy used to tell me when he thought there was player destroying our team don't be a hero cut that zero and that is what i am telling you about vic and when it affects your mindset it's gonna affect your play and when it affects your play it's gonna ask yourself is vic worth all that think about it think long think wrong